If we take a look at unfiltered zero traces in the black box, uh, we will see that unfiltered signal is extremely jumpy, extremely thick and almost unusable. On the other hand, the filtered signal is much, much smoother and looks, well, almost like a line. Almost, uh, because this is not the best behaving UAV that I used for record this uh, trace. If, on the other hand, I will use something with correctly set up filters, you will see that it's much, much thinner and nicer. Before gyroscope signal hits the PID loop, it comes through the series of filters. Uh, depending on the flight controller software, the number and types of filters uh, might be different, but in all the cases they have the same purpose to remove everything what's not, what is not uh, in clean information what's happening with UAV. So to remove the unbalanced propellers motors noise, remove the harmonics, remove the noise from the streams of air hitting the motor arms, etc. etc. There are at least one or two filters. First of them, low pass filter is located in the gyroscope itself. And most modern flight controllers and modern setups uh, almost disables this filter, setting the cutoff frequency as high as possible. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, this is not a very advanced filter and it introduces a lot of delay. Second of all, there is a low-pass filter located in the flight controller itself. It's software-based. The main role of this filter is to atten attenuate the frequencies uh, above the cutoff frequency. So, hopefully, it's, it should remove uh, what we don't want in our signal. In practically, this does not work very well. This is why uh, some time ago two additional filters were introduced in Beta Flight, Clean Flight, uh, INAV, probably Race Flight. I'm not sure about that. There are called notch filters. This is notch filter number one and notch filter number two. Gyroscope signal ends filtering somewhere here, but this is not all. Also, the PID controller internally for the D-term uh, filters uh, itself. Also with low-pass filter and the notch filter. Before we proceed any further, let's take a digital filter 101. So, what's the difference between low-pass filter and the notch filter? And why are we using notch filters to filter gyroscope? Uh, most of you, I hope, is uh, familiar with the concept of low-pass filter. Uh, this filter is designed to attenuate frequencies above the cutoff frequency. Uh, it's not specifically like this because cutoff frequency is also attenuated. Uh, in filter theory, we define the cutoff frequency as the frequency that is attenuated by the filter by half. Uh, so, everything. But let's, um, let's keep it simple. Uh, everything with the frequency lower than the cutoff frequency should be left unattenuated. Everything with the frequency higher than the cutoff frequency should be attenuated. Uh, the higher the frequency, the bigger the attenuation. Uh, this is not linear uh, dependency. It's, it's, it's a curve, but like I said, let's keep it simple. Uh, so, Setting up the low-pass filter is uh, quite simple. We only have to know the frequency of our main uh, noise. For example, on the mini quad, motors gener generally generate frequency above 150 Hz, usually more. So if we set a cutoff frequency at, I don't know, 90 Hz, uh, the signal uh, that comes from low-pass filter should be pretty decent. Not perfect, but pretty decent and uh, for sure usable. Let's remember that not longer than a year ago we were not using uh, notch filters at all. Everything ended at the low-pass filter. The notch filters are something slightly different. They are not designed to 
attenuate everything above the cutoff frequency, but they are designed to attenuate a frequency range. So they will attack only a given spike in the signal spectrum, leaving uh, everything else uh, not affected. Uh, that's why they are defined not by one frequency, but by two frequency. S frequencies. S -s -s -s. Okay. There is a center frequency for the filter, the notch filter frequency, and uh, two cutoff frequency, lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency. But since the distance between uh, lower cutoff frequency and the filter frequency and filter frequency, boy, and upper filter frequency is exactly the same, it can be simplified to just a two number. So, for example, if uh, we want to attenuate something between uh, 120 Hz and uh, 180 Hz with the center at 150 Hz, uh, we can just describe the notch filter as uh, a filter with frequency 150, this is the middle of our band, and lower cutoff frequency of 120. So, if the difference between a middle and the lower is 30 Hz, uh, then the lower cutoff frequency is 120 and the upper one is 180. Simple? Ah, never mind. Okay, so uh, those are our filters. Uh, they are set up as a sequential process. Uh, that means that signal comes through low pass filter frequency, notch 1, notch 2, then goes into the PID loop into the DTERM uh, controller, which again is filtered with the low-pass frequency and then DTERM notch frequency. Uh, the question is how to set them up. Mm, low-pass filters are uh, pretty simple. All we have to do now is more or less the frequency of uh, our first main source of noise. So, on the mini quad, this is something usually around uh, 150 Hz. So, if we set a gyroscope LPF at 90 Hz, we should have a pretty decent attenuation of main uh, no noise sources. Uh, pretty decent is not perfect. Mm, but with the simple rule of, let's say, 90 Hz for mini quads, uh, 50 Hz for uh, 10 inches or even 12 inches, we can have really, really pretty decent results. Mm, but there is a reason we have notches, and the reason is to have even better, uh, even better uh, filtering. But to set up our notch filters, we have to know more. To know more, we need high-quality black box uh, logs. High-quality, I mean the logs recorded with high enough frequency. If the frequency is not uh, big enough, we will not be able to see all the frequency ranges we really want to see, and the signal we will observe will be distorted by something called the folding frequencies, uh, Nyquist frequency. This is not for. Uh, this is not the material for this video. Maybe something else in the future. Uh, bottom line: we need high frequency black box locks. What does it mean for high frequency? Mm, it depends uh, on the UAV, on the on the multi rotor we want to analyze. Uh, bigger machines uh, using uh, that are using ten or twelve inch propellers, maybe even nine. Uh, nine inches uh, should record the black box with frequency of at least 500 Hz, but uh, the higher the better. For the mini quads we need the, frequ the recording frequency of 1000 Hz, 1 kilohertz. Everything uh, below that will be almost useless and distorted by the folding frequencies. So how to check this? Uh, I will show it on the example of INAF, uh, but for the black box, uh, for, sorry, uh, for the beta flight, it will be almost exactly the same. First of all, uh, check the flight controller loop time. Uh, this is the frequency with which the PIT controller uh, exe is executed. Uh, on my board, it's 500 Hz. Uh, and then check the black box tab. 
my black box is recorded with one-to-one -one ratio, so that gives me 500 Hz uh, recording frequency. Uh, the flight controller is on the big machine, so it's fully enough. If I would be using uh, something smaller, then absolutely required will be to set it to one uh, kilohertz and then uh, one to one uh, black box recording ratio. Um, of course, I can use uh, <coughs> higher uh, pit uh, loop frequency. Uh, and still record uh, black box slightly slower, but uh, in the end the uh, black box frequency should be 500 or 1000 Hz. Second thing we have to do is to inform flight controller to record the unfiltered gyroscope signal. Uh, how it's done? In case of both uh, Beta Flight, uh, latest uh, Clean Flight 2.0 and I know this is exactly the same procedure. We only have to go into the CLI tab and type debug mode equals gyro. Oh, well, uh, sorry, you have to type set, not just debug mode. Set debug mode equals gyro and then save. From now on, the unfiltered uh, gyroscope signal will be recorded as uh, debug uh, variables in black box and we will be able to analyze it.